I heard an interview a while back with uh, Adam Levine, lead singer of Maroon Five, and he was talking about he was like, if you look at old pictures of like uh, huge musicians back in the day, like Led Zeppelin had their own private jet, and Maroon Five was like, yeah, we don't have that anymore, and it just kind of blew my mind. I was like, that's such a huge band. I figured they'd have everything. Um, how do you think the music industry is going to keep shifting like that? Do you think? you know, artists are just going to keep struggling and struggling until there's almost no point in making money being a musician. I can only speak for myself and I, I try not to pry too much in my other musician friends by asking them about money. If they, if they choose to open up, then obviously I, li- I like to listen because I'm interested in the economics of the business. I will say for myself that uh, money has been great. And part of the reason is, is because I'm not in Maroon 5. Like those upper echelon bands have been hurt because they used to make tons of money selling albums. Mm -hmm. I've always been a working class musician. I sell good amount of records. I have songs on the radio, not number ones. They're on the charts and we tour and we tour on a bus, but all we're all in one bus. We don't have a bus for the singer, a bus for the guitar player, a bus for the crew guys. Like, you know, we don't have four semis. We pull our trailer behind the bus. We're a middle class rock and roll band, blue collar. We go out and we're, we're the majority of what people are in this business who are working. Now there are younger bands that are in vans. I was in vans for the first 10 years of my life. And it's important to have that because that's how you grow as a band. You know, you need to be able to know the scent of all your bandmates and, you know, and know their their good and bad habits. That's how you grow chemistry. You need that close proximity. Um, But uh, so the way that's great for people like myself is that there are 10 million ways to make money now in the music business, whereas in the old days, there was one way making records. And you didn't make a lot of money touring. The touring was a break-even proposition, but the touring was to promote the album. So now bands are putting out albums. They're not making any money on the albums, but the albums are basically promotional material for new touring. So it's like, hey, we got a new album out. Come see us when we play The Masquerade or when you're in Atlanta or Harpo's when you're in Detroit. And so the roles are reversed on how income's made, but how artists can really make good money is, is YouTube. And, uh, people always bitch about Spotify and Apple music. Well, they pay. That's the thing is it may not be tons, but the the difference is, is in the old days, a lot of the record companies, uh, I, I, I'm not saying they're all this way, but when one person is in charge of how you get paid, and this is before the days of computers and where you can track every album sold because they're scanned. You have to take the record company's word on how many albums they pressed, how many albums they shipped, and how many albums were sold. It, and then if you didn't believe them, if you felt like you had sold more albums, well, you had to prove them wrong by going and getting a CPA. Then you have to give them 30 days notice for them to prepare the books. Then you would audit them. But they had 30 days to cook the books if they wanted to, to, to make them look however they wanted to. And yes, um, you know, the burden of proof was on us to prove that they were being dishonest and that we had sold more than they had. So it was really hard for bands to, to prove that they were successful and to make a lot of money. Whereas now, do you think Apple Music's going to cheat artists? They, they wouldn't even dare because there would be a class action suit and they'd be out of business. So Apple Music and Spotify, even though it's fractions of a penny, they do pay you. So every month I'm getting checks from Apple. I'm getting Spotify. I'm getting checks from from uh, Sound Exchange, which collects my stuff from online usage, which is YouTube videos. Uh, I mean, Judas is at 42 million views. This is intellectual property that I have a stake at. So I, it's not tons of money. It's just that it's small amounts, right? And and it's just like when you make a film and it goes up on Netflix, uh, like you already spent the time and effort to, to get it there. So this is just mailbox money that that thing's making money for you forever. Like so when I, like I don't have to do anything. To, I don't have to water Judas. I don't have to fertilize Judas like it's already done. 
So it's just out there as an entity making money, uh, which is great. And that's why I, I'm, and I'm also lucky that I'm 50 years old and I've made 19 albums because all those albums are all doing the same thing. They're all out there kind of working for me. Some working harder than others because, you know, obviously the more popular and more recent albums are, there's more activity. Um, and I know it's hard because I know what, what I'm saying, it pisses a lot of other musicians off. They're like, well, you know, but still the, it's not a, it's not an artist friendly formula. Well, what are you going to do? Like, this is, this is the world we live in. Like, so you, then you could maybe you could do Patreon. I mean, there are ways where you can connect directly to your audience. But if you ignore SoundCloud, if you ignore, uh, you know, the big streaming services, I don't, I don't want to name some and I'll forget others. But if, if, if you, if you ignore them, uh, you're ignoring the, the biggest delivery mechanism to have fans hear who you are. So let's say that's, let's say that Spotify is not generating tons of money for me, but they are putting us on their hard rock playlist and someone's going to come across us and go, Hey, this is, I really like this song. This is really cool. When Fozzie's in town next time, I'll go see him. So they pay 20 bucks to come see Fozzie and they buy a $25 t-shirt and maybe they get a signed picture at the merch desk or maybe they VIP so they can watch the special concert that we play during sound check. It's all these things. And that's the way everybody is going to just have to learn that instead of it being the old way where Maroon 5 used to just get a huge check from Sony or Atlantic or whoever their label was, we're like, hell yeah, we sold 3 million albums, here's the check. It's not that way anymore. It's not, it's not like you go to work at Target and you get a check from Target. It's like now you get a check from 20 different people and they're all paying you and, it, and you hope that it adds up to the same amount as if you worked at Target and maybe it's more and maybe it's less. But I think, I think as, as, as you, we end up with more, uh, you know, we end up with more Amazon musics and Netflix. I mean, all these companies are going to start getting into music, right? I mean, YouTube's now in the music game. A lot of these people are going to start, uh, and it's just good for us because competition's great, right? When it was just Vince McMahon and WWE, it's not good for wrestlers. But then when you got AEW and you got Impact, you got Ring of Honor, you got New Japan, all of a sudden there's options for guys to negotiate their contracts because there's more people there that they could go work for. So um, if, if Spotify wants to do an exclusive deal with Joe Rogan, because they recognize there's an incredible amount of value in what he does, then they can give him a better deal than they give Maroon 5, because they realize Maroon 5 to Spotify maybe doesn't have the same value So to, to Spotify. So I think that's where artists are going to get into a position where if they're willing to do exclusive deals, they can get better royalty rates, or they can just choose to have it on every platform. And I think it's going to be the same thing for you as a filmmaker. Do you want stuff on Amazon Prime? Do you want stuff on Netflix? Like, do you want to just do a YouTube only release and cut your deal straight straight with YouTube and get a better royalty rate uh, than just a standard monetization? And I think that's where it's it's going to be great for the independent uh, content creator, and that we mm -hmm. can either partner with people exclusively or we can diversify and just let the market do what it's going to do. Ultimately, the only thing that we can do is control the quality of what we're putting out. The industry is the industry. And in 10 years, it'll be different. And maybe, you know, maybe Maroon 5 will be begging for the old days where Spotify was only giving them a fraction of a penny, <laughs> you know, like, and maybe it gets worse or maybe it gets better. Who knows? Who would have, who would have thought 20 years ago that, we'd have computers in our pockets, right? And like, it's incredible. And, and imagine what AI is going to look like for bands and content <laughs> creators. You know what I mean? Like people could sit at home with, the, with AI goggles on and be on the front row at a concert. It's, it's going to be, it's going to be amazing. And I, I'm looking forward to it. Right. Cause to look back and just romanticize on the days where, when I used to go see a concert, it was all general admission and we slept overnight on the, on the sidewalk outside the venue the night before. My so dad told be, me about those days. It's incredible. Like it wasn't like, Oh, I've got good seats. It's like, you know how you got good seats. You spent the night on the sidewalk the night before <laughs> and you hope that, and everyone sprinted into the venue to get on the barricade in the front. And if you had to pee or get food, sorry, you just, 
got piece of barricade and he stayed there the whole show. It was, <laughs> it was great. But I don't know if I want that, you know, again, I, I want to go get a salty pretzel and go pee now. So, you know, <laughs> during, during the ballad song, I don't like. 